to Charmed Life, a radio show discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Charmed Life. I am your host, Trisha Carr. I'm so pleased to be with you again. And if you're catching this live, well, hello. You may be finding us on Facebook Live, whether on my regular profile page or on Facebook.com slash Trisha Carr Charm. Or you may be catching us on Universal Broadcasting Network's channel. It's UBNRadio.com, and it's on Channel 1. So please do join us live every week at 11 a.m. Pacific. That's Sunday. And uh, you can call into the show. We will be taking calls. The number is 323-524-2599. And a little bit of business before I get into today's show. I'm very excited about today. Um, I would love to uh, invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you can find it by just searching Trisha Carr, Trisha Carr Charm. I do have a couple of other channels because I have a cat. Actually, uh, the, the channel that will come up on YouTube with my name first is my cat's channel because it's Franzi, the best kitty hug ever. And he has 11 million views, <laughs> which I'm totally fine with. And so you'll, you'll get to meet my cat and uh, my husband before you'll meet me if you look up my name. <sighs> Not bitter at all. No, I'm, I'm in some of the videos. Um, but if you look up Trisha Carr with Charmed Life or Charm, then you'll be able to find the YouTube channel. I post more than, uh, I post all of these as archives, and then I also post some other videos like education on animal communication, um, how to be a healthy um, empath and highly sensitive person. And I'm starting to post um, as guided a spirit message at the power num at the power hours like 333 444 1111 or 222 so I'll be going live on Facebook for that, and then I will post those messages up on the YouTube channel. So please do subscribe, and um, please do also, if you listen to this on iTunes or Spreaker, please subscribe there as well, and leave me a review. And actually, please do reach out in any way. If you have questions, if you have any requests for what you think you would like to see on the show, the type of guests you would like for me to pursue, I would love to hear from you, and I would love to answer your questions on air too with my expert guests. So I, I wanted to let you all know too that I have launched a website specifically for Charmed Life, and the address is charmedlifewithtrishacar.com. It's kind of long, but you know. But you can always just find me on uh, trishacarcharm.com, and you can learn about my services. And back and in segueing into a class that I'm teaching online, Animal Communication 101. And there is, um, I actually have an early bird special if you register before February 13th. And it will be, what is it, $97 until then. And uh, after that, it will be $147. I think I have the prices right. Um, but what that is, it's online. You can self-pace. I'm, I'm going to release the modules over three days. The modules will be made up of videos, um, PDFs, different kinds of resources that you can watch at your own pace, take notes, really in, in, ingest and digest the material as you are comfortable. And then after uh, that first bit of the, uh, after a few weeks and everyone's had time to get through the material, I'm going to do a Q&A session live on Facebook that will be recorded and will also be documented and you will be able to have that and you can submit your questions. So please check it out. It's for anyone who wants to communicate with their animals um, or if they want to have a foundation to what it, you know, peek into what it would look like to do it as a profession. Um, and also just like, it's just a ton of information about the perspective of animals and um, how humans and animals work together with life purpose. So back to today. I'm very excited to welcome my uh, expert in-studio guest, psychic medium, Kate Kofelt with Kate Communicates. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show. I am so thrilled and honored I don't remember how long ago, I think it was about a year ago that I met Kate. Um, I actually stumbled across Kate at um, probably my, my favorite crystal store, Crystal <laughs> Matrix in, yep. um, is it Eagle Rock or Los Feliz kind of? No, it's, it's South Glendale, Los Angeles. Oh, you might want to move your mic, mic up a little closer. Oh. Yeah. How's that? That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I hear myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I, I believe it's, it's got an LA address, but yes. it's like South Glendale. Right. Right. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and I, I, uh, was in the store and Kate was doing readings and I was just drawn to her. I mean, she is a psychic medium and she also does animal communication. So I'm like, well, this is my kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a wonderful reading. Oh, and, thank you. Oh, thank you. And so, um, 
Kate, first of all, let's tell people how they can get in touch with you. Excellent. Um, yeah, you can uh, get a hold of me. Uh, you can go to my website, uh, katecommunicates.com. That's Kate with a C, communicates plural, dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, there you can find uh, an email or a phone number. You can look for uh, my events. Uh, I have an online scheduling tool that makes it very simple for yes. clients to mm -hmm. just go ahead and book a time to, to meet with me. That's great. Yeah, I have that too. I think that's really oh, that's so much help. Yeah, because it, as a as a customer myself, I kind of want to see when that person is available because if they're not available for three months or their our schedules don't align, then I'm probably not going to book right now. You know, it's kind of an important component for me right, to, right. Uh, you know, to make the decision to book um, because I'm not only a practitioner, I'm a client. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> right. Hopefully. <laughs> That's the best way to be a teacher. You have to be a student. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So um, tell us about those events. And oh, then yeah. I'd love for you to talk about your journey and your work. So mm -hmm. um, one of them is already sold out. It's out in February. Um, I am uh, going to be at Indigo Alliance with uh, the incredible Thomas John. Mm. He's a friend and mentor of mine and uh, very excited about that one. But unfortunately, that sold out just recently. However, I have one coming up this Friday with uh, Cheryl Murphy. She's a great friend of mine, and mm. uh, she's an excellent clairvoyant uh, oh, psychic medium as well. So we will also be at Indigo. You can uh, look for the information on my events page on my website and uh, follow the instructions. It's pretty easy. Cool, yeah. yeah. And that's, again, her... Friday night, uh, 7, 7 or 7.30. I can't remember the exact time, but it starts at 7 or 7.30. It's at, would you say, Indigo? Indigo Alliance, Alliance? in Pasadena, California. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to go check it out, too. <laughs> so Kate's, uh, I think, Tony a Sweet is my producer today. I'm so honored that he's here. <laughs> it, it, it is uh, Kate's information on the, yep. on the, okay, cool. So great. So she'll be, people can look up, uh, see your website and all that kind of stuff. So um, please do, if you would, let us know about your journey or your work. Get us into your, the story of Kate. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, basically, I guess I can start that uh, I grew up in a very fundamentalist mm -hmm. Christian home. <laughs> and uh, I did, too, if you watched the show before. <laughs> well, actually, it wasn't the home, so I took myself to church. I did that, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did that, too. Uh, but, uh, you know... I, th I think at the age of four or five, mm -hmm. uh, I had, uh, I'd woken up and, you know, it's pitch black and I see a coffin at the end of my bed. Whoa. And I see my grandmother, Aww. you know, sitting in there and she just reaches out her hand to me. And of course, as a four or five year old, I was like, oh, you well, know, yeah. freak, you know? Yeah. So um, as soon as I closed my eyes, we got the call, she passed. <gasps> and I didn't wow. understand what was going on. And then um, basically, really through, my childhood, I'd have all these dreams. I'd have, um, in fact, there was a fire back in the 70s in the hills of La Crescenta, uh -huh. and I had dreamt about that the wow. night before. And um, the next day, when the you know, the fire was behind the hill and we see all this smoke. I'm like, Dad, what's going on? And he's like, oh, there's a fire over the hill. And I go, oh, it's coming over. And he goes, oh, don't be so negative. And how old were you? And I was like, Probably. um, I want to say it was about 10 maybe, really? or something like that. And yeah. you just, well, you were just casual. Like, well, I already saw this. I already saw this movie. I, it was just like, <laughs> last yeah. night. And I, I know how it ends. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and I had no idea, you know, yeah. but he was like, oh, don't be so negative. And then, you know, by three in the morning, we had 52 fire trucks lined up <gasps> on the street, you know, putting out the fire. Yeah, so amazing, you know, but things like that would just happen throughout life. And people would just say, how do you know that? Are you psychic? And of course, as a Christian, you know, you're like, that's you a witch. You yeah. cannot go there. It's witchery. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, but about five years ago, I started um, my uh, journey, my spiritual journey, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. taking a different look at uh, perspectives. Um, I started uh Actually, I'm, and I'm not embarrassed to say this, I'm a big advocate of therapy because uh -huh. I, can, I feel like it helps you grow. Yeah, you mean um, like a it, you don't have to a have psychological a mental, talk? Yeah, oh, of yeah, course. You don't I have to too. have a mental illness. You don't no, have, you no. know, it's really good to just kind of get a different perspective because yeah. when you're around your friends and family, they see one side of you, right? They yeah. know how they perceive you. Yes. So, um, but it was my counselor that uh, 
identified that I had a gift. He just, oh, I love that. I love when therapy, <laughs> right? I hear that from uh, several people. They're like, my, my therapist told me I was an empath. My therapist told me that I was an indigo child. And I just love when they're, because here's the deal, folks. And I love when my doctors, medical doctors will say like, I'm intuitive. Like one of my medical doctors this last year, he said, my intuition is that, you know, everything is cleared up. Like what we were. And I was like, a medical doctor. He said intuition. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he doesn't know what that word means. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we are bio, psycho, spiritual, mental units. We are all four of those. So abs and especially if you're dealing with the, the psycho, you know, uh, component, you have to segue into spiritual. Otherwise, you're just going to. And Absolutely. same thing when you're dealing with the spiritual, you have to segue into this, the psychology, Absolutely. you know, the shadow. We always talk about the shadow and spiritual healing, which is what Carl Jung, who is a famous psychologist, um, you know, a big pioneer deemed the unconscious or the subconscious mind yeah. and it's really important to um, spiritual development and personal development in general well especially if you had grown up with uh, childhood trauma mm -hmm. right and yeah. I had you, you know too, I, right? I grew up in an alcoholic home mm -hmm. and you know very dysfunctional very abusive and you know um, it's interesting I, I see a lot of people that sit across from me that have had those type of backgrounds that have are intuitive right and, and across literally right now <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, what's interesting to me is like some people feel like that they could just hide in healing with the spiritual aspect, mm -hmm. but it's all aspects. Mm -hmm. It's all components yeah. for us to move forward. Mm -hmm. And that's how we can help others. Yes. But we can't really help others if we're still stuck. Yes. You know, and not addressing a, a, a major component of ours. If we right. shut that part of ourselves down, then how can we have that wonderful connection with spirit? Absolutely. And um, it, that goes to the physical, too. I mean, we yes. need to be working. I mean, this is our instrument. This is our this is our point of understanding. No matter, uh, uh, sure, we are more spiritual than we are physical. But right now we are physical. Yes. And we should be paying attention. We should be anchored in here. We're here for, uh, we're in this physical, this incarnation for a reason. And we shouldn't squander it. I, I hear people um, sometimes in, like, spiritual uh, groups or something like that, you know, like Facebook or something like that say like, I don't belong here. Take me away. And I'm like, well, that's that's going to keep you blocked up if um, if that's your belief. Do we have a caller? Oh, by the way. OK, just to remind you of the phone number, we are taking calls three, two, three, five, two, four, two, five, nine, nine to get a reading, a, a mini reading or ask a question from Kate and myself. Um, so, yes, I um, the, the entire uh, mechanism, the whole person mechanism is um, really important. So yeah, I've, I've had counseling as well. I'm not currently doing that. I'm like doing my own um, inner work, I guess. Mm -hmm. But you know, yeah, absolutely. I think that that is, is a really important. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's funny, because I had um, some physical issues. And that's what kind of also, uh, you know, made me wake up mm. to, oh, my gosh, this is all together where it that we're, it, we can't separate Yes. One from the other. We have to address the whole person. It has to flow, just like our chakra system. Absolutely. It, we have a caller, so are you ready to take a call? Let's, sure. let's do it. Do you do we have the name or anything, Tony? Hello. Hi. You're Hello. on the air. Who's this? Hi. I'm Dana. How are you? Hi, Dana. I'm good. Where are you calling from? Oh, I'm from Valley Village, California. Oh, excellent. You're our neighbor. Can you do me a favor? Can you turn down your computer? Because we're getting Yeah, actually, I was just trying to do that. <laughs> Hang on one second. Yeah, actually, I was just trying to do that. Hang on one second. Okay, let's see. I think that's good. Yep, sounds good. That yep. work? Sounds Okay. Yep. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for calling in. We um, we're here with Kate and myself. And uh, so, what's going on today? Are you interested in a a reading, or do you have a question? Yeah, no, I'm interested in a reading. I uh, just stumbled across you guys and I've uh, kind of been doing, <laughs> like all morning I've been coming across like these great spiritual things and I just thought, hey, why not? Oh, you know, great. I want to ch check it out. Oh, good. Looks like you've been, you're have being led this morning. Well, um, I am for sure. In the interest of time, give us a little, uh, do you want a mediumship reading or are you wanting more of a life reading? Actually, I would prefer a mediumship reading. I just did a life reading, so that okay. would be awesome. And you're hoping to connect with someone on the other side? 
Yes, that would be, oh my God, that would be awesome. Yes. Okay. Well, of course, um, any medium will tell you that obviously there's no guarantee because they're in charge. Right, right. right. <laughs> so, yeah, who, yeah, but um, and then in, in the interest of time, tell us the name and the relationship of the person. Uh, Christian, and he was my best friend. Oh, okay. Kate, would you like to um, see if you're, you want to take the lead, see if Christian's coming through for you? Sure. Um <clears throat> a second sure. um you know i see the color red around christian did he uh like red or was he uh connected with um something like f fire department or something like that I, I see a lot of red around him mm, he i mean he liked the color red uh he was he was uh not really into the fire department no no no, no, like that, that, no that's okay so he liked the color red correct yeah. Okay. I mean, it wasn't his favorite color, but I do remember seeing him in red uh -huh. often. And um, I feel like he was sweet, but I and, and I feel like his personality was um, he was open minded, but and he would keep his um, sorry about that. Um, he would keep his uh, feelings inside. And I feel like uh, in some ways, um, if he was pushed he would, uh, the anger would come out. I, I feel like he would try to hide his anger because he was such a nice guy. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, okay, he's showing me letters. D did you guys write to each other when you couldn't connect on the, on? We com would text. I'm sorry? We would use text. Yeah, text. okay, so that, okay. And, um, I'm hearing the number 30, like 30 years. Um, was there like a milestone at 30 years for him? Or you? Um, not sure. Write, uh, write that down because um, I'm clearly hearing something around 30 years. And I feel like there's a celebration or like an as, like ascension or something that's coming out like at 30. It, it, it's like a – oh, help me out, Christian. It's like I'm celebrating. It's like a movement. Like he, there was a shift. Does this make sense? Um, well, it could. It well, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, um, that's okay. Write that down. Uh, a lot of times, okay. when, yeah, a lot of times when we're, especially if we're on air with readings, there's a lot of nervousness, and we don't always connect with all the information that comes through. When I hear something mm -hmm. really, really clearly, or I see something really clearly, um, and, and you're not quite tapping into it, I call that the gift that keeps on giving. A lot of mm -hmm. psychics will call it psychic amnesia. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that spirit's way okay. of of still connecting longer with you. Now, was he connected uh, th uh, through summertime um, by birth or death? Because I see summer around him, and I feel like he was a big outdoors, like he loved to be outdoors, connecting to the earth. Both. Did, uh, both, okay, thank you. And, um, yeah, and you guys kept your secrets to yourselves, correct? Like you can confide in one another, and those secrets would not leave you. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And um, and he has uh, he's come through in your dreams. Is that correct? Yes. OK. Um, but you're not remembering everything. And he's actually trying to communicate with you and give you some encouragement because I feel like um, life is kind of holding you back or you're feeling a little bit more down. Um, particularly over this last year. I know um, 2016 was very rough for most people. Um, and I, I feel right. like he was trying to come in to comfort you. So what I see for you, if you could, do you, do you have a journal by your bed? Because if not, please leave a journal by your bed. So when he does visit you in your dreams, you can wake up and write everything down that you can remember. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've actually, but I've actually hoped to, you know, to have him come to my dreams. He's actually, I, I've only seen him twice, so I was, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I, and I, the but first it, one was brief. The second one was more detailed. Yes, yes. So, um, please write, write down when he comes to visit you in the dreams. Continue to write down more information, okay? Um, and he's okay. and and he's showing me a monarch butterfly. Do you see those? Not really. 
I mean, one, yeah, actually, once in a while I do in my backyard. Yeah, yeah. So that's his way of giving you a gentle kiss. Does okay. this make sense? So I, always, I often wondered, actually, when I see butterflies or even hummingbirds, because him and I, uh, mm. we actually saved a baby hummingbird in my pool once. But mm. I actually often wondered if I, the butterflies were him giving me a sign. I wasn't sure. Yeah, he's giving you a little kiss and just keeping you encouraged, keeping you, um, reminding okay. you to connect with him. Um, do you pray, honey, or do you meditate? Uh on and off, and actually, as of recently, I've been trying to get back into it. Okay. Um, if you stick with your meditative practices and you make that mm-hmm. a disciplined priority for yourself, you'll be able to connect with him even deeper. You're actually going to be able to feel him. And he stands to your okay. right. Does and that... is there a – yeah, we have we – have a... My left? No, to your right. To your right. Is there – we have – Oh, to my right. a lot of calls, and we're going to get to you, but I wanted to ask Dana – um, is there a small child that um, he I see him with a small child and uh, that he, he puts his hand on the small child's head like he's overlooking this child. Does that make sense to you? Mm. That's interesting. Uh, I take care of a little boy who okay. is just the most amazing little boy. And I often think about Christian because he never got to meet him. Oh, well, he, and... he's, he's met him. So yeah, this, this, I feel this child is very special and he is actually working. So that makes sense because I felt like that was how he works with you rather. I mean, he is with you, mm-hmm. but it's like, that's a really important connection. He actually oversees the child and it's almost like you guys are co-caretakers of this child together. So, and, and wow. since you that's thought, awesome. yeah, since you've thought that, you know, you wish that he could meet and he's acknowledging that he has met this child. So, and it's a male, yeah. That's uh, it feels like a boy. It yep. looks like a boy. Okay. Well, thank you so much for calling, Dana. Please call back again. Uh, and you're, you're such a beautiful spirit. And I feel also I got the number seven for you, which I, which means spiritual awakening. So I think you're in a big ascension process right now. So um, blessings yep. to you and Great. thanks for calling. Thank you, Dana. Thank you so much. All right. Bye bye. It was really sweet. All right. We have another call. Who's next? Okay, the names aren't. Well, this one's about love and relationships. So okay. Hello, you're on the air. Who is this? Uh, Margie. Margie. Hi, Margie. Where are you calling from? Uh, East Coast. The East Coast. Nice to meet you. Um, and uh, are you in, do you have a question? Are you interested in a reading? Yeah, I'm a little uh, just awkward. I never did this on the radio before. So, <laughs> turning out um, a, a, a love relationship, kind of see where it's going, if it's coming back, if it's you know that sort of thing. Okay, a particular person. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. one person that um, – I'm going to go ahead and start, if you don't mind, Kate, because yep. I got a little whiff. Yep. Um, so I do see this person. I feel like you guys have a cord. There is attachment there, and I don't mean that in the bad way if, if people know what attachment means, and you know, people, we use that in spiritual language. I mean there is a, an attachment, like a love attachment. It does feel like it's thinned out. I see you guys kind of at a, at a distance. I'm getting this image of this cord being a little bit thin, and it's at a distance. It feels to me like there, it, there has been – this has become um, necessary because you're trying to – both of you, but it even feels like more you need to, need to have your, um, your own autonomy. You need to you, – like you came into – you were a little bit too out-focused, and you, you needed to empower yourself a little bit more. But you still care about this person. And so um, you're, yeah, so it feels like you're in this place where you're, you're starting to get anxious because you're like, oh, my gosh, is this, is my development, my empowerment going to come at the expense of this person that I love? Does that make sense to you? Uh, in some ways, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so so far as a time span right now, you guys, I'm seeing that you guys are just coasting as you are. You're starting to look more toward uh, it, it's a him, right? Is it a male? I'm seeing a male with dark hair. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I see that he's, and I feel like he's got some heartache and I, I feel like it may have a little bit to do with your relationship, but it has to do with some past. Is he getting over some heartache of maybe some other stuff that has happened to him? Maybe loss or. There's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. 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 So, um, and he's actually like his higher self is kind of protecting you because because he doesn't want it to be a codependent situation. Like he has to do some healing. And so he 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 sees it like if we're going to have this relationship, it has to be healthy. And right now I'm a bit broken and I'm having to heal. 
So um, he's actually looking out for you by having that distance. But he, he, so it's like you're separate, but he has you in his heart, but he's not wanting to pull, magnetize like that kind of pain into a relationship with you and make you responsible for it because it's something he has to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I understand that. So do you think there's um, uh, a potential for this to come back around or... There's potential. There's always potential, but it really has to do with your, your each of your developments. And honestly, right now, it has a lot to do with his healing. Kate's nodding her head. Uh, are you picking? What are you picking up about? This yeah, um, Margie? <clears throat> I have. Um, what I see, I, I do see. You know, uh, darker hair, and um, I have to ask. I feel like he's a very kind man, but I also feel like he is um, uh, very responsible. Like you know, c- kind of a no nonsense. You know, let's get get work done and 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 then we'll enjoy you know our time together does this make sense yeah yeah and um very responsible and i feel like he's very smart correct and i feel like he makes decisions with uh logic and data is that correct yeah yeah and um so what i i do see that you guys kind of go up and down if this makes sense i feel like there's times that you guys feel really close and then you 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 kind of spread apart. Um, is this correct? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that this has been more uh, so in the last six months. I feel like that. Yeah. Y- yeah. Okay. Um, so what I do see is is he is trying to protect. I do agree with uh, um, Tricia that he is trying to protect you. He does have um, because he ha- he has a caring heart. He he really does think about others, even though he he tends to be driven. Uh, he does keep you in mind. Um, he wants to avoid you living through the pain he has. Mm -hmm. And I, I do feel like he still has to cradle his heart is what I keep hearing. Um, he still has to heal. Mm -hmm. So if you just give him that space and work on yourself and, and do things that you love to do, being your own person. I do see you guys coming back around, but it's like you need to just allow time space, to heal, yeah. the space to heal. Does this make sense? Yeah, it, it's been uh, some time yeah, and, since we were... And because of that attachment and because of the love and the desire and all of that, it is, it's really hard it's painful when you're when you have that separation but i think the guidance that i got in the beginning about your self empowerment if if that isn't something that you are specifically identifying with right now like that's what's been going on that is the space that you're being given i believe that your guides were saying um, Margie, this is the time for you to uh, work on your empowerment, and uh, it's time for him to work on his healing so that you guys can come together as, as equals. But it definitely, I mean, with healing on either side, on either end, you guys are going to, will come together with a beautiful, important, stable relationship. But, it, you know, we kind of got to get ourselves up to the task first. Do you see uh, time frames or anything like that? Or? It, it has to do with your commitments. I mean, it, it's not really something because you could make 10 radical decisions in five minutes from now and it would completely change the time frame. Um, so, um, you know, it's not. I'm not really being shown a time frame. It's literally precipiced upon each of you pursuing your um, personal healing and development right now. Mm-hmm. But, but there, like I say, potential and hope, but you got to turn inward. All right, sweetie, thank you so much for calling in. Please do call again another time, Margie. Nice to connect with you. Thank you. Thank you, Margie. Thank you. All right, we have another caller. (laughs) You okay? Do you need a break? No, we'll take one more. Okay, cool. Hello. Hi. Hello. Who is this? This is Victoria, and I was listening to your show. You guys are pretty amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, I think you're amazing. (laughs) Where are you calling? Where are you well, calling I from? Well, I want to do some. Uh, I'm on Friends today, oh, and I want to do some amazing projects this year. And I want to know if I'm in the right, heading in the right direction. Some new projects? Is that what you said? New projects. I want to make a lot of money so that I can put the money back to work to good use. Oh, well, that's and, beautiful. And you know, help turn people's lives around. Oh, well, goodness. In so many ways. Well, um... Kate, do you want to take the lead? Do you have any? Sure. Um, <clears throat> uh, right off the bat, when I, I would tap into your energy, I do feel like you are the type of person that would give the shirt off of your back 
but I also feel like you expect some kind of energy exchange. Does this make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Because I feel like you value interaction with others, if that makes sense, where um, no one's getting a free ride and everyone works together. Is this, does this sound right? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of building teams yep, that yep. give their hearts to each other so we can have a more positive, influential, and you know, breakthrough process. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I feel like with you, um, you've always been a glass half full type woman. And this is what keeps you moving forward. Um, these projects um, with you, I do feel like uh, you're kind of scattered. It, it, I feel like when I tap into thinking about these projects, I can't focus. Does this make sense? Yeah, because these are all capital raises for new companies, and I get hit with a lot of new companies all the time, and I have to pick and choose the ones that I think are going to survive. They're all like little premature babies, and I don't know which one's going to make it or not. She said new companies. It was and kind of hard to hear. Sometimes you, yeah, we raise money. <laughs> she raises money for new companies. We raise money. Oh, you ra okay, yeah. so you're a fundraiser. Um, yeah, a fundraiser for charities. I've done a lot of that. And a fundraiser for new companies. And yep. some of them have already taken root. Yep. So I really like this. And yes, it does require teamwork. Right. So I think you're getting the scattered thing because, you know, just like an investment banker, we're bombarded all the time with new stuff. Right. But so. I, I, I kind of see you when you look at these that you're like, which one do I choose? And you kind of bounce back and forth between which one to move forward with first. And then you get an idea about this one and then you get an idea about the other one. And it kind of it pulls you back and it's kind of like a block for you for moving forward. Does this make sense? Um, to some degree, but, you know, as you do research on anything, um, you run into roadblocks. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. So, so, so what I'm hearing so, for you... So I have to pull back. You know, if I find out, yeah, if I find out that, you know, something is, as they say, not kosher, then, yeah, you have to kind of, you have to flip-flop a little bit. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Right. So... But that's part of the process. Right. So... I'm looking more to see, you know, end results. Like, what are we looking at for 2017? You yep, know, with our, yep, yep. So, so bear with me. For, bear with me for a minute. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm seeing is because you kind of get stuck in the research and you're flipping back and forth, it can actually hold you back from progress. So moving forward for 2017, I actually see you um, – prioritizing in some ways like when you look at these different projects just pick one and focus on that first and then go to the next one and I do see you um, okay um, interesting uh, this just came to me and I, I'd like you to write this down but getting focus groups to, to look at how you move forward and how you operate. Does this make sense? It's it's kind of um, another pair of eyes looking at you. I think that's exactly what I was looking to hear because oh, I'm beautiful. thinking about Yay. restarting up my show. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, can, you know, we're going to so have... It was Sorry, in the back ahead. of my head all the time, and I was like, do I want to do this again? Because it is, it's a lot of, people don't realize that you ladies and everybody in, in radio and television, oh. how much time it takes to put out that two minutes or that 20 minutes or that 50 minutes. It it's does, it's so true. Much. It really it does, I know. I know, I started, this show starts yeah. at 11. I don't, I don't get up at 10. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I just wanted to tell you, Victoria. You wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and start writing things down no on your kidding. text messages to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, Victoria, I just wanted yeah. to give you, um, we have um, other callers, and we're so blessed with so many callers. Yeah. You're so beautiful, but I wanted to tell you um, that I was told to remind you, you're, you're really great working with teams, and you build teams, but don't forget your spiritual team. So Sometimes when you're feeling overwhelmed or something like that, or how do I, what, what do I, 
remember that you don't have to take a piece on your own that to, to turn to your spiritual teams. And I feel your spirituality. And um, just remember that in absolutely everything, there's nothing too small or minor or, um, you know, insignificant that you can't ask for help on. Even if your bangs aren't really lying the way you want them to, you can ask angels to help you with that. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling, Victoria. Yeah. Please do call back another time. Really lovely to meet you. Thank you, Victoria. Yes, lovely. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Good luck to you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Doing a great day. I knew we were going to get a lot of calls today, Kate. <laughs> I did. I, I knew it yesterday. <laughs> and we have a ton. Do you need a break? Do you want to chat us up? Let's do another one. <laughs> Let's do it. We're, <laughs> we got the power hour going on. Okay. <laughs> While we're tuned in, right? All right. right. <laughs> we have Garrett and wants to know about employment. Great. Ah. Garrett, you're on the air. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. call. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. How are you today? We're wonderful. We are. <laughs> How are How you? Are you? <laughs> I'm caffeinated, so I'm great. Okay, Kate, do you want to take the lead or do you want me to start? Um, I'll show. I'll go. Okay. So employment. Garrett wants to know about employment. So I feel that you are, um, you have employment now, but is it kind of part-time or is it something that you are only uh, partly interested in? I'm hearing part, <laughs> but you're wanting to move forward to something uh, else. It, it's classified as part-time, but in the time that I've been with the company, I've been working about 45, 48 hours a week. So oh. it's, it's been a great part-time experience. Okay. Okay. But um, so then I, I feel like you're wanting to move towards something and it um, is it something different in the same company or is it a different thing altogether? Um, I actually have, I have two opportunities. I have an opportunity oh. to move to something a little bit more my style with the company that I'm with. And I've also been recently approached by a different company in a completely different environment um, that would be an interesting use of my talents. And okay. so I, I have these two things that are coming up at the same time right now that are giving me great cause for ponder. So it's both. I, I, it is both. You're gonna, you could move forward in the company and move forward to something different, but it's definitely a forward moving thing. Correct. And you're feeling like the one in the company right now, you're like concerned, is this just a safe choice um, or is it the right choice? And the other one is like super exciting, brand new and creative, really aligned, but I'm scared because it's new. Um, it's, I mean, there's, there's pluses and minuses to both. Right. And I, you know, the, both companies are, are great in their own respects. They just, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to create that balance sheet of pluses and minuses for both. And I just didn't, mm -hmm. um, and, and one day I'll go like, oh, I'm still going to be doing this. And then the next day I'll get another, you know, vibe of, oh my gosh, I'm totally going to do the other. And then, you know, it, so I have this great seesaw action happening right yeah. now. Yeah, and the one with the company that you're in, you're a little further along in the consideration process. It kind of, and the other one is like, you know, they're not exactly evenly aligned where it's like both of them want to know on Thursday. So it's a little uncomfortable that way too, right? Um, thir yes, Thursday's the day. Oh, Thursday's the day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Kate, are you picking? Yeah, Kate, yeah. So, um, Garrett, I. Um, the culture where you're at now, I feel like they, you like that. You kind of fit in that culture, and I feel like that they really admire your work and your dedication. Is that correct? That would be in a very fair statement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the new opportunity that was presented to you, um, you know, it sounds exciting, you know, because you're tapping into certain skill sets. I feel like that you're not with this current opportunity that you're in um but, for, but yeah but for some reason i do feel like the uh organization that you're with now is a better fit i feel like um they're okay because and and i know that work wise you know the the work that you actually do isn't in perfect alignment with fulfilling your soul's mission is that correct that's correct, but I do love it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. you do like that. Um, yeah. Give it some time. I, I feel like this, um, I feel like you could grow with this organization. You've made such a great um, impact already. You know, when they took you on initially, it was very part-time. That, that, that's how they wanted it, but they saw what you brought to the table, what you contribute to the team, what you contribute in your thoughts, in your um, you know, your own vision, um, your own expertise, and they really do admire you. And I feel like you have more growth 
in the future with this organization than the other one. And for some reason, I'm getting a hit that with this other opportunity, the culture might not be the right fit for you. And culture is really important when you're working. Does this make sense? Um, yes, it does. I, I'm getting also that there's not really any wrong choice, just so you know, right. and that the lists are really mm -hmm. great and helpful, but at some point, burn the lists and use your heart only. Just absolutely, just feel no words, just feel in your heart that if you chose the new job, there would be some challenges and you, and, um, but that's okay. Um, it might be more, it, the other one, mm -hmm. you might feel a little more like you're soaring in a particular way. The second one, and even if you went with the second one, you could feel like, um, oh, I made the wrong choice, but you won't have, you wouldn't have been making, you wouldn't have made the wrong choice. It's just going to be kind of a, a different kind of a challenging road. The current job, um, it, you, you're in this place where you think you're missing out if you say no to the new job, the brand new one, but that's not true either. So you go with the current job, the promotion, and the other one, you're not missing anything there. All of the things that are being offered to you are still being offered to you and they're going to be continue. All the good stuff is still going to be there. That you're laughing. That that makes sense. Great. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Use yeah, your yeah, heart. Yeah, you're right on. Yeah. Both of you are fantastic. Oh, Aww. you're fantastic, Garrett. Thank, Thank you so you, much for Garrett. calling in. Please call again another oh, time. Oh, bless your heart. Thanks, ladies. Good luck. Happy Have a great day. I sure appreciate your help. Yep. Sure. Good luck. Thank you. Well, um, still more calls. Excellent. We have five minutes left in the show. Maybe we can go like a minute long or something. You actually have nine minutes. Oh, I have nine minutes. Nine yeah, minutes. because we started Yay. late. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you okay to keep going? Absolutely. Let's, Let's do it. <laughs> Hi there, you're on the air. Who's this? Hi, this is Connie. Hi, Connie. Where are you calling from? Indiana. Nice to meet you. And you are calling for a life reading, mediumship reading question? Uh, uh, maybe a little of both, but yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, you're hoping to, are you hoping to reach someone on the other side, or is it more like you have questions about what's going on in a particular area of your life? Well, yeah, I, I just um, I just want to know how this year is going to play out. I've just lived the last five years since my husband passed away in fear, and I oh, just honey. I just hope that it's going to change. Okay, okay, great. So, um, what, what what do we think? Do you think? Um, are you thinking of? Um, <clears throat> hmm. I, you it's funny. I do feel a male figure I do. here. I'm feeling him too, but I feel like we, that we, he wants to address the. Uh, living in fear and moving forward thing first. Right. Yeah. So, um, um, Connie, was your husband connected with business? Was he, because I see uh, the gentleman here that I have is in a business suit. And that's usually a symbol that, uh, for me, that they were connected to business or worked in like a corporate environment. He was a realtor. So a realtor. He's always so up. he's always dressed up. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So that's his business. Um, yeah. And, um, I also feel he was very smart, um, but he also, I feel like when he made decisions, at the end of the day, he would choose uh, to make a decision by his gut feeling. Like he would look at the facts, look at the figures, and kind of weigh things out, but at the end of the day, he would just uh, make that decision by his gut. Is that correct? Mm, pretty much. Yep. And... Um, I, I feel like he worked a lot of extra hours as well. Um, he really was <laughs> into taking his, care of his family. He was very driven. It was all about, like, let's get secure. And I, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like, did he say he wanted to retire early, but that's not in his DNA because he was a work whore, like a workhorse? Does this make sense? <laughs> you just said work whore. I'm sorry. That was I, funny. I know. <laughs> it's like... That's funny. Work horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gallop, gallop. <laughs> Does this make sense, honey? Yeah. Everything you're, everything you're saying is true. I mean, he, I don't know about the retirement part, but he was a work horse. Yep. Yep. So, um, you know, honey, he, he, um, oh, okay. <sighs> Interesting. Um, when you lay down at night, that's your last thought is, of, is, is of him, correct? Yes. Yeah. And he wants to acknowledge that. And he, this is how he connects with you, sweetheart. He, he gives you a kiss on the cheek at night when you go lay down. And he wants you 
to start living life again. Mm. Um, I, I feel like when I tap into you, honey, I feel like you've got this cloud over your shoulder and he wants you to see the sunshine. He wants you to get outside and breathe the fresh air and not stay inside and make excuses for not connecting with others. Does this make sense? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just want to say just to, um, I've written down, it's okay to be okay is what he wants you to understand, to give yourself permission <laughs> to be okay. I got chills on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, is that, that sounds like him? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that pain that, uh, what I got was an image of him. He is always with you. He's a, he's a guide. I mean, he's like, he's never left you. He's c- as close to you as he ever was. And sometimes, and the, the deal is to be okay with his presence, because right now when you feel his presence, you're associating it with his absence. And so if you can be okay with his presence and know that it's presence and not absence, then that could help you to start feeling more empowered. And honey, do you look at, do do you have your, uh, a picture of him in a gold frame that's next to your bed? Um, I have him next to my bed. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. She has him, so you oh, have a, okay. a, his urn or something. Oh, okay, that's okay. Um, and is there gold in there or like pieces of gold? Because I see gold around you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, um, he wants to say how much he loves you, and he wants you to remember the good times. Don't reflect on what, <laughs> The loss is. He wants you to remember the connection that you both had and like dancing through life. And he wants you Mm -hmm. to carry that with you so you can move forward and and get connected with people, honey. I just do not make excuses to, you know, I feel like your friends call you up and you'll make plans or you don't, you, you come up with excuses and you always find a way to back out of them. Stop doing that, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Just and connect, and your friends will support you. It's okay. That dancing, I think that's a that that's a really I got a really kind of big hit on that where he's saying yes, I'm still dancing with yeah. you. So when you're out with your friends, he's with you. He's on a date with you. He's, you know, <laughs> he's not gone. Oh. <laughs> and to so to start embrace the fact that he's with you in a different way, and then be okay. And um, things are looking up though. I feel we, that you we know, move. Go ahead, sweetie. We we moved to a different place right before he died, and I really don't have a lot of friends. I I, I have a job because I have to work because he uh, we had just moved. Um, his real estate business fell apart, and so we pretty much had nothing at when he died. And I've been struggling ever since, and and I I worry because I'm I'm you know getting to be I'm going to be sixty five, and I'm worried about what's going to happen to me and who's going to take care of me and where I'm going to live and you know I just I'm I'm just fearful Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to give you just a little bit of um, energy healing right now, sweetheart. Okay, if you want to just open your heart up to me, just do that with your intention. Be okay with the fact that I'm going to go in there right now. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, great. So what I'm doing, I'm just going into your heart center right now, and I'm just going to grab a hold of some of that anxiety and that fear, and I'm going to replace it with some pink golden light and it's all mixed together and I'm just displacing that and what that is is security and it's faith and it's belief in yourself because faith is belief in yourself and it's comfort and it's ease and it's peace and I'm just sealing it back up with some white light and your husband is saying we are still partners you're not alone and you have so much so much more help than that and so just to um, in this moment right now if you can just take a nice breath will you just take a nice breath with me and just feel how you always have that, the breath of life. That is existence. So you always have that. That means that absolutely everything else is there for you as well, that you're being supplied in every other way. When you start to feel that anxiety and that fear, stop and take a breath. And that will bring you into the present moment, and you'll know that it, you are well. Okay? Okay. Okay, sweetheart. Okay. <sighs> Blessings to you. Thank you so much for calling. Please do call in another time, Connie. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. Do we have time for one more? Okay, great. One more? It's <laughs> great. Yeah, we're doing great. All right. Hello. Are you on? Michelle. It's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. You're on the air. Oh. Hello. 
Hi, Michelle. How are you? Oh, my goodness. Hi, I'm good. Thank you. Oh, wow. I've been waiting for a while, oh. and I was about to hang up. Oh, I'm so but glad anyway, you didn't. I'm so glad to be in the air. <laughs> Me too. Well, where are you calling um, from? I have a, okay, my best friend. I'm going to stop. I'm, I'm going to try not to cry. That's okay. My best friend. My best friend passed away Friday, Friday morning. I'm so sorry. And she, she, uh, she, she was my, oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay, darling. She was my confidence. She was everything to me. And she was a medium as well. Oh, and every no time I, have to, I had a question, oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay, honey. I'm crying. Every time I had a question, I will ask her. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I will, my question to you is like, does she have any, does she have any message for me? Okay. To let me know everything is going to be okay. And um, now, for I'm, I'm getting an S name, Stacy Sandy, something like that. Is this, does that connect with you? I'm sorry, say that again? A name with an S, Stacy Sandy, Susan, something like that. Her name, her name. Her name was Joanne. Oh, Joanne. Okay, I don't know what the Stacy is. Um, Joanne. Well, I when you started talking about her, I f- did feel her presence. So when you said she was a medium, that made a lot of sense to me. She knew this appointment was happening. She, yeah. She. I know. I know that she wasn't ready to go, and I talked to her last week, mm. two weeks ago. I'm sorry, and she was getting stronger. And mm. I called her on Friday, and her daughter picked up the phone, mm. and. I'm like, so does she has, I know she, like a few months ago, she said, honey, even if I go, I'm always going to be around. Yeah. Um, let me ask does you. Does she have any message for me? Oh, hold on. Let me ask you something. Honey, did did you feel like a chill the other night? I, I feel like she's walking around you. Did, did, does this make sense? Do you no. feel, do you feel her presence? Because she is walking around you. I, I didn't feel nothing, but if she does, I wouldn't be surprised because that would be something like she would do. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, so what I'm hearing, um, because you haven't meditated since she's passed, is that correct? No, be, no. I always, I've been a mess for the past couple of days. You've been and, what? You've been what, Parker? Oh, you've been a mess, of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Deep in the and, grief. And I know... I know she's around, and but I just want to make sure that she's okay. And if she always made me feel better, mm-hmm. like don't worry, we keep going the right way. You're doing fine. Mm-hmm. So I just want I would like to know if uh, you know she, she you know if she's always going to be around me. She's always going to be an angel. Yeah, honey, all you need to do is think about her. I do get a sense she's still kind of in this yeah, life transition. Too. Like yeah. she's going, you know, we have a life review when we pass, mm-hmm. right, when we cross over. And, you know, the the energy that I feel around you, I feel like that's her lingering energy mm-hmm. to keep supporting you until she does get a... Um, more accommodated over there, I guess, yeah. and it just kind of I see her going in and her. out. Yeah, but she right? has so much light with her. At first, it, it was interesting because she feels both like she's on this plane and she hasn't left, but she already had so much light. Right. So she's kind of in this place, and the fact that you said that she um, just wasn't ready to go, she's she and needs I, to be. Yeah, and what I'm on. hearing, honey, is that um, when you okay. feel up to it, to really okay. start meditating, so. Because she wants to communicate with you. I do get that sense. Um, and when you do meditate, this is how we connect with our loved ones mm-hmm. on the other side. When we're really still and quiet and we can invite them in. And when you get to that place, because, honey, you're you're right in the heart of grieving right now. I mean, this is so, this okay. is, you're still in shock, mm-hmm. okay? So even if she were to connect with you at this point, I think you would miss it because you're just in that place. And that's absolutely okay. Honor your grief. Honor those feelings that come up, any feelings. Even if you, um, oh, I just got a hit. Even if you, you know, reflect back on any time you got irritated with her. <laughs> You know, in your memories, think of all the beautiful times you guys had together and just honor anything that comes up for you and just know that she is supporting you. And 
at the right time, when, when, when you get through some of your grieving period. And, you know, honestly, honey, usually I, I kind of have a rule or I, I kind of stick to this mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, I like to wait a few months to connect with their loved ones on the yeah. other side after they've passed. So they can get their healing. They can have their healing and come back as an empowered person. I, I just hear her saying, I am okay and I'm doing it my way. So I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. I know. Okay, she was a tough cookie okay. in the end. <laughs> and, you yeah. know, and she I always talked to her when she was in the hospital a few months back, and I said, be nice to the doctor. She goes, oh, screw the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. she was like, listen, you know, it's going to be, and I know then I haven't seen her for a long time, but every time, no matter what, if she feels crappy or not, I would, I would call her like I called her last month because I felt like crap. And she pick up the phone, and regardless of her illness, she goes, it's going to be fine. Mm. Just keep on going, focus on you, and you'll be fine. And I was like, every time, oh, I'm sorry. That's, That's okay. all right. Every time I, we, every time I, I would hear her voice, mm -hmm. she always made me feel better. And I would hang up, I'd be like, okay, now I'm okay. Well, she, she, she I know I will. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. I just, she wants to know that even though it, she didn't feel like it, it was her time that, you know, and she was very stubborn in a way that she is. And that's the whole, I'm okay. I am okay. It's fine. And, and she, and she's that, that I get to do it my way. She's still doing it her way in a way, but she's so connected to God that she is also doing it God's way. Yeah. And I'm so sorry, but we we're out of time. It was so nice to talk That's to you, okay. Michelle. That's okay. Thank you so much so for having sorry me. For your yeah, loss. I really appreciate. You're welcome. Thank I'm glad you so come. much. Please do call again. Bye bye. Bye, Michelle. Thank you. Bye. Well, that's our show today. Wow, a lot of calls. So much fun. Again, this is Kate Kofelt, and tell your uh, website and your. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you can go to Kate Communicates Kate with a C, dot com, and. Uh, um, we have our event Friday night yep. with Cheryl Murphy. Uh, so check out my events page. And um, thank you for having thank me. Thank you so much for being on. What fun. amazing, what an amazing show. And I'm Trisha Carr. I hope to see you again next week or on my YouTube channel or podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. <laughs>